How do you get some really dark, dark scene watercolour? Getting some impact with a range of contrasts in your watercolour can really help give the impression of strong light and add a bit of impact to your paintings. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter and tutor producing videos like this and online workshops to help you improve your painting. For this demo, I'm going to be using this image of Port Clyde, Maine, USA, uh, kindly sent to me by Sandy. Thanks very much, Sandy. Sandy is one of my Patreon members. I've got a, a sort of informal painting club up on Patreon, uh, which, which is where I set monthly painting projects and I give some painting critiques uh, based on those projects. Now, mostly I've been using scenes from Europe up until now, because that's where I'm based. And patron, but patron members get to make some suggestions to me for future videos. So I thought, well, let's, let's spread, let's go around the world a little bit. Let's go uh, continent by continent. So this time uh, we're in North America. So I believe this is, and Sandy, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is Port Clyde, Maine, USA. Um, and I don't think I've done a, a North American subject before uh, on YouTube. So this is a bit of a first. I've never painted this scene, but I thought um, what struck me about this photograph, and I've had quite a few from Sandy and others, and I will be doing more from, from the Americas, is look how dark those buildings are, how striking they are. Um, with the contrast with the light boats there um, and these dark darks in the in the background buildings and the foreground some really lovely contrasts and values to 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 play around with in watercolor which which works which works really well in watercolor so what else attracted me to the scene? Well, it's actually quite a good composition to start with. There's not a lot really I can change here. Um, we've got these two dominant buildings with lovely geometric shapes. I say lots of light and dark, quite a bit of light hitting that rooftop there. Um, on the left hand side, we've got the um, some buildings going up the street, a couple of figures, which I'll probably bring a little bit closer to us, make more of a feature of those, um, which would be a nice sort of balance um, of the left-hand side with the right-hand side. An assortment of boats, quite tricky boat shapes to contend with a row of boats there, but they're providing a nice little bit of light against the dark. Um, lots of dark shapes over on the right-hand side, dark shapes on the left-hand side um, with the staircase there. And then trying to also replicate trying to create the, the structure of pebbles and rocks in the foreground down here and also what we've got is a nice jagged edge going around those rocks um, of that of the the edge of that shadow that's quite nice as well so let's see how we get on the paper i'm using is saunders waterford it's 15 inches across by 11 inches down and using a soft pencil this is a 3b pencil i am drawing in the main shapes of the composition so i described to you uh, my attraction to the scene and some minor changes i'll make with the positioning of the people and maybe the boats but I need to be true to the, the position of these two um, dominant buildings on the right hand side where, we, where we've got that really dark um, frontage to them. Uh, but it's important to get those, those shapes in right. Now in the photograph, we, the photograph just cut off the top of that right hand building. So I've taken the liberty of just squeezing it down a bit. So we can see the apex of the uh, of the of the roof. Um, so it's just come down a little bit, rather than just leaving it cut in its prime up the top. Um, and 
making sure I get those shapes right. Um, the the vertical sides, um, where that little extension is in the uh, top of the roof on the right hand building. And now these boats, little tiny craft here um, that have been sort of tethered up against, uh, uh, I guess, the, the seashore. Never, I've never been to this location, by the way, so I'm just, I'm just making it up. Um, so I assume these, these boats never, uh, they're not sort of um, in the water during the day. They've been brought up on the, on the beach. There are uh, a row of them there. And then on the left-hand side, there's another one on its own, which, again, I thought made quite a nice balance to the group of um boats on the on the right hand side and also there's some lovely dark shadows um, behind that as well now these rocks i'm going to try and emphasize some of these rocks um they're going to be more more like boulders i suppose you'd say uh, rather than little tiny pebbles and rocks uh, so create more of an impact with that Right, a couple of figures, as I normally do, always add in a couple of, what, a figure or two, maybe more, uh, but just helps add in a bit more interest to the scene and an idea of scale um, as well. Um, could be a focal point, these two figures um, walking towards us. So, uh, yeah, that's the thing I'd have to decide. I think in the photograph, the figures were walking away. I'd prefer to have the, the figures coming towards us. Um, so we can see their faces. Um, behind the figures, obviously, is the background, which looks to me like a sort of foresty um, conifer, pine tree type forest in the background. Uh, I'm going to have um, a right hand boat here, just a little bit bigger, just changing it slightly from. The type of boat in the photograph but a boat here really in the shade um, so it will be quite a dark boat and then just above that uh, on the right hand side are again some nice dark shadows they're sort of going around um, a, a drum or a canister or something um, up there on some decking but it's just it's not too much detail because that really is on the right hand side and that's what I Need to be careful with on on the periphery of on the on the edges of the painting. Don't want to put in too much detail. So I'm quite happy with the drawing, um, making sure that's okay. And then going in now with the first wash, where I want to get right the sky, not too dark, not too vivid a blue, um, and then the colour of the buildings as well. So the buildings, the sky, the buildings that are showing the light and the foreground, they won't be painted again. So I need to get this right. So I'm whacking in a lot of the um, ultramarine blue here. Lots of horizontal lines, gradually getting a little bit weaker, added a bit more water there, a little bit weaker towards the foreground. I've gone over the edges of the building, but I can still see them because that, that soft pencil, they were quite dark lines there, so I can still see that. Now I'm mixing in a bit of burn umber and a bit of neutral tint to sort of get in a sort of a light bluey grey. I'm not sure what the what, how I would describe exactly what the colour is, but um, that sort of uh, weathered, I guess, in the winter. Um, these these buildings they get a fair bit of um, abuse and, and treatment um, from the weather, but I want to now get in right the sort of base colour of these buildings. So what I'm doing now is painting in a slightly thicker mix. That was burnt sienna, um, yeah, burnt sienna, and a bit of. Um, Bit of cerulean blue, burnt sienna and cerulean blue gives a nice grey. 
a bluey gray and you never you never quite know how this is going to appear when it's when it dries it was it's always going to dry um lighter so you've got to try and compensate for that and uh um go a little bit darker than you think now what i'm doing here is lifting off with a damp brush so the same brush i'm using a mop brush here and I've wet the brush, squeezed a lot of the water out, so I've got a good edge to it. And as soon as it touches the paper, you can see it's still quite moist. You can see that shine on it. So I can still lift things off the paper. And if you've got good quality paper, good quality watercolor paper, then it will take this sort of treatment and it won't, you won't damage the surface by doing this. So lift that off while it's still damp or before it's dry. You could, you could sort of still do it when it's dry by damping the paper first um, and, then, and then lift off with a brush in the same way. So now I'm coming down into the middle ground. Um, just finish off these buildings. Bit of cerulean blue, burnt sienna, and down to the edge of the boats. And this will dry lighter. I know I know it's going to dry lighter. And that's going to give me the chance for some maximum contrast with the darks to really make the darks darker and the lights lighter. That that uh, big range of contrast. Now with the foreground, I'm a bit more erratic with my brush marks just to not have the texture of the surface too um, flat and a little bit more varied. Do you see I've got a, well, I've got a slight slope on the board. This is good quality watercolor paper. So uh, it's absorbing things quite well and it will, accept this sort of treatment I'm giving it and I'm adding in different just sort of subtle different color combinations um, burnt siennas ultramarine blue different thicknesses as well and this hopefully will give me a little bit of uh, opportunity to use some of those lighter areas they could be little little boulders catching the light and the, the darker areas could be bits of shadow or darker stones and pebbles and so on. Um, so that's, that's going to dry lighter now, a lot lighter. With, as I did with the rooftops, with the brush. So I washed it in clear water, squeezed out as much of the water as I could out of the brush and then just dabbing it here and there I'm lifting off that still quite damp uh, paint to give little highlights. Now this middle building I just want to lift off a bit more paint there This is a synthetic brush, which is probably a better brush to do this sort of thing rather than a natural hairbrush. But it's, it's a sort of um, imitation squirrel. This is a Raphael brush that I'm using at the moment. And I've uh, muted the sound. <laughs> um, Hair dryer time, speed up the, uh, the drying of the watercolour. Sometimes I might just let it dry on its own. Um, other times I will use the hairdryer. Sometimes if uh, if you if your board does have a bit of a slope and uh, you've, you've put in that first wash and the paint still is still moving, it's still working after you've 
after you've um, finished putting the paint on the paper, it can still be going in, in different directions, generally downhill, of course, um, but in, in, in some cases with capillary action or whatever the, uh, the uh, physical uh, term is, you, you know, can go uphill as well. But I need to make sure this is dry before I go in with the darks and then eventually the dark darks. So, now, so that, that was uh, step two done. So step one, get the drawing right. Step two, lay down your wash. All right, this is the way I do it. Lay down the wash. Uh, leaving little highlights here and there, maybe the figures, the boats in this case, lifting off um, some of the rooftops. But now, uh, stage step three, this is where we start to hopefully make the painting come to life with some of these uh, darks here. And I'll start with the background. So, yeah, it's dark, but not dark dark because if I make that background too dark it's going to come forwards if I make it too green it's going to come forwards so I've got to dull it down a bit some people might not even use green uh, you could use a sort of gray blue um, but the actual edge of that dark area you could just make it quite jagged to give the impression of uh, trees in the in the background so I'm using that sort of a greeny blue not too dark painting around the two figures which um, I'm undecided at the moment you know how how I might where those figures will be light against a dark background or dark against that lighter background of the uh, of the pathway. Not not too short at this stage, but to keep my options open, I'll just paint around those. So this brush now is a squirrel mop and it's got a good edge and a good point to it. It's holding a lot of paint as well. Not as big as my first brush, a sort of, I would describe this as a medium sized brush. This is 10 uh, millimeters in diameter. So not a massive one, but the important thing is it's got a good edge and I'm holding it now closer towards the, the uh, business end of the brush to have a bit more control. Um, with the initial wash, I might uh, hold the brush a little bit higher up so I can be a bit looser with that, but these shadows on the left hand side, just an impression. I'm looking at the photograph as I'm doing this and I'm just um, squinting my, my eye and trying to find just the shapes of, yeah, I mean, I mean, we know it's steps there and you could paint in every single step, but we're just trying to give the impression. It's over on the left hand side. I don't want to put too much detail over there. So I just uh, painted in those shadows behind it. That's the, the other dark area here is the um, shadows behind the buildings. I'm checking my edge all the time, checking that edge is good. That's a rooftop there. And the shadow underneath that roof. I'll go through my palette. Um, that'd be a good idea. Uh, starting from the top, neutral tint, then burnt umber. So neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue in the middle, ultramarine blue, Amazon Crimson, Windsor Red, Light Red, which is what I'm using there, Light Red, bit of Cadmium Orange, Light Red, Cadmium Orange for that boat, and 
down the bottom is a lemon yellow. Then just over to the right of the bottom, I've got a lavender, which is quite a nice sort of opaqueish color. Uh, sometimes use that for background hills. I'm using that quite a lot at the moment. And that would actually be quite good against a, a damp um, sky. It's not going to, being opaque, I find that they're very good at not causing any blooms or bleeding or cauliflowers. Uh, um, if you see what I mean, and that's quite a useful addition to the palette. Up the top of my palette in that mixing well, so I've got three main mixing wells. Generally in that top one, I'll be painting in the dark. So this is where I need to get these dark darks now. And that's where with a neutral tint, or I could use Payne's Gray, I'm just getting a much more intense, darker color, but not neutral tint on its own because it could be quite boring as a, a color. Now I've left, towards the apex of this roof, I've left the light for the drain, no, it's not drain pipe, it's, um, it's the flue for a wood burning stove, I guess, um, which must be needed. I should imagine it's pretty chilly in the winter months. So that's uh, a wood burning stove chimney coming out the building and going up. But we're starting to see now how, how much of an impact these dark darks are. And I'll just change the intensity of this darkness as well. Go for a hard edge on that side and then filling in the middle over to the left hand side. But again, like I was doing with the foreground, just adding in different thicknesses of paint. Different colors as well. Bit of bit of burnt sienna, bit of ultramarine blue. Now going a bit more intense for this one, so quite quite a lot of ultramarine blue with this. And I want a sharper point as I can get it, so I need to make sure I look at my edge, get some of the paint out, get that sharp edge, and then follow that line as best I can down the right hand side, that right hand edge of the roof. So it's quite dark. I, I perceive these buildings as being, particularly this right one, I'm going to go right, so fairly dark and then light in the middle and then dark again towards the base. We'll have some little shadows between in that gap between the two buildings. Hard edge on the right hand side of that front wall. Grab the neutral tint, ultramarine blue. Now these, the color of these buildings, the, the paint that, that have, have gone in there, still quite damp. Um, and so the base here, I want to go in really dark, with this shadow mix get ultimately i'm going to get quite dark towards the foreground maybe not too dark further away i've gone up to meet the shady parts of those the front of these buildings these huts and just dab, just dabbing the 
brush into the into those walls just to keep it not looking too flat. So this again, this thicker, darker mix, ultramarine blue, bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna. Over to the right hand building. What I'm getting here is a sort of soft transition, a gradual transition from the a lighter air in the middle of the building to something quite dark. Underneath there's a sort of, I guess there's a sort of decking around the building and then there, there'll be a, a dark shadowy recess under, underneath the, uh, the decking and then the boats in front of that. Burnt Sienna. This is the inside of the far boat. So there's, I've got a far boat that's sort of pointing in a different direction. It's sort of at right angles to the other three boats in this row. And I'm going to leave a lot of the boats on their right hand sides, unpainted, keep that quite light to get that impact with the dark shadows behind. So using, so having some really dark values is going to make these boats appear a lot brighter. That was Alice in Crimson, Ultramarine Blue and Neutral Tint. And again, just checking my brush. It's quite thick, the paint at this stage. It's not too watery. But uh, enough paint on the brush so that I can do it all in one. I don't have to keep going back to my palette and replenishing my brush. I can just do all of this in one so that it looks quite fresh. I think if you've got to keep going back to your palette and mixing and mixing, the danger is that when you've got, gone back to the painting, something's, an edge is dried and then, you know, you, you, you get these funny edges appearing where you did one area and then you go on to the next area. Now I've got a bit of shadow. I'm imagining something way over to the right and it's creating this shadow. So generally the, well, the light is coming from the right hand side, obviously. Um, but get that shadow, longer shadow going across almost the foreground. Uh, and then this near edge coming up against these um, boulders uh, or big rocks and we've got a nice sort of jagged edge where we're where we're sort of bouncing around these different um, outlines of the rocks I'll add a bit more form to those four foreground rocks as a later stage. I need to get a bit of shadow, but you can sort of make out where in the foreground where it's dried a little bit lighter and we can make those into something. Those lighter areas could be where the light's hitting the rock. Now back onto the right hand side, a sort of geometric shape of different shadows. We don't really need to care precisely what they are. It's just really shapes um, at the end of the day and they will come down to that decking and then below the decking will continue on with these really dark darks, quite thick. Um, 
ultramarine blue, colours in crimson, neutral tint, pretty much the same mixture. Around some of these foreground rocks nearest to us. So let's just, with this brush, let's just try and give a bit of definition now to some of these rocks and boulders, not too much. Uh, it is the foreground, so I don't want to put too much detail and effort into this, but just a few little marks there to start things off. I'll come, I'll come back to that, add a few more little shadows here and there. Now, check my edge again. The shadow behind this sort of dormer, dormer window in the roof of the right hand building. So that's just going to make that rooftop a bit more interesting and the top of this extension and then down the right hand side. Something or other down there. Um, the left hand side of the flue for the wood burner, the stove. I think it was a sort of, I guess it would be a stainless steel. So anyone on Patreon if you're ha having a go with this, um, think about that metallic shape and the reflection of that. Now that little built little boat on its own on the left hand side, I've put in two dark shadows there. So we're giving the impression of a larger boulder or a bit of a slope just in front of that boat. Do you see with the, um, that's gone over the uh, end of the boat. Light red for these figures, a little bit of Winds are red. Start off with their faces first, and then some arms, of course, and maybe it's summer. They're wearing shorts. So this left hand figure, let's have the top a little bit darker and then down to shorts or whatever. And then figure on the right, maybe keep that a fairly light top and just a bit of a shadow light coming from the right, bit of a shadow on the left at a sort of funny angle. Now, shadows for the two figures, going up to connecting with that boat, thin shadows, going from right to left. So I'll fill in this boat, this nearby boat. Up to the uh, gunnels of the boat, the top of the boat. So this one's in shade. So it might be a, a light boat in the, sh in the shade there. Uh, in places, it's perhaps catching a bit of light along the top of the gunnels, but 
it won't be as bright. It shouldn't be as bright as the boats to the left that are in the light. Smaller brush now, a synthetic round brush, where we'll just add in some details of windows, some architectural details. I need to get in some really thin lines with um, this small, get in some really thin lines with a small brush for the timber, the timber clad huts. Bit of greenery going up the street. Connect the figures. Burnt umber, alloys in crimson, cobalt blue. And paint in some windows. Now these windows, I'm not painting in the whole window. I'm just, where it's catching, where I'm getting some dark shadows, I'm painting that in and then other unpainted bits of the window, that could be where the light, the light is catching it. So not, not sort of uh, perfect rectangles. Do a tiny bit of splattering with this brush. Generally, splattering is a bit better with a smallish synthetic brush rather than a, a big natural hair brush where it can literally go all over the place. Um, you're going to get more control with a synthetic brush. Now, going up to the dark shadows um, with a little bit more definition to these boulders in a random way just going across with a fairly dry brush not too much moisture on this one I'm just eking out any bit of paint that's left in my palette rather than going up to the water just really pick up any sort of color that's there and using my fingertips I will gently merge in bits of the paint as well Bit of detail to that left hand boat. Check my point on the brush. Now I've changed brush. I'm trying out a new brush here from Lebensen. It's a handmade brush with a bamboo handle, but this is a, a synthetic white brush, white hair. Um, it's a beautiful rigger and I can get lines, the thickness of a hair, which is just ideal for doing, doing a few very thin lines there for the the effect of the timber uh, cladding on the front of that building. So I'm using a could have used um, a, a round brush with a good point, but yeah, nice little almost like a rigger brush from Lebensen. Now continue on with my normal synthetic round brush putting in these windows, in the, the these dormer windows, in that extension, like before, not perfect rectangles, leave little gaps to give the impression of light hitting a curtain or something, 
right back to this brush again and get get in these bits of timber, these planks of timber. Fairly, fairly thick um, paint. Check my point. And thinking about perspective here, so as I'm coming down, I'm getting more horizontal here and then getting steeper again. Do you see? So uh, giving the impression of that perspective in that right hand building. Not sure this is going to show too much in the finished painting, but a few lines on the front of this right hand building. It's a danger of painting dark on dark. You probably won't probably won't see it too much. Let's add a bit more detail to these boats. Careful with the painting of um, that line of that boat and dab, a, dab the brush in the end of those boats. Right, this one here. Now this one here, in my mind, that right hand side doesn't look too clever. Um, the drawing was alright, but the way I painted in that side it's sort of bulging out a bit too much to the right, so I'm going to have to... Um, well, the easiest thing here is just to bring the shadow from the decking in just a tiny bit, just to close off that, that bit of a bulge there. quite tricky boats at that sort of angle to to get right. Now, a bit more definition to the boulders and there, that line there, that's probably quite important because that's connecting the two sides of the painting. The, the dark shadows on the right extending across maybe a little bit of shingle or little chippings in the middle but that that different texture joining up with that boulder on the left hand side and continue with this brush this detail brush so we're really into we're well into the fourth stage of this painting which is the details, um, just little marks here and there, some verticals like, uh, not sure if that's an aerial, maybe a bit of extra dark, darker values into the recess of those windows. I need to uh, add in the doorways to the huts as well. Meanwhile, over on the left hand side, let's do a bit of horizontal connecting again. Final bit of detail to that boat. Little bits that I've left unpainted, you can make those into little boulders or rocks like I did just there in front of that figure. Just add a bit of shadow one side of it and instantly we can turn it into a little bit of a rock. So with that first that first wash, going back to the first wash of the foreground and I 
I kept it, um, it's got quite a lot of burnt sienna going across and then I put in a little bit of blue where I am now. That's kind of mellowed down a bit and it's gone a bit lighter. So it's quite nice having that different colours, the warms and the cools in those rocks. They're not all too, uh, too uniform. Get in a bit of paint to show the gunnels that boat. Yeah, I need to just come in a little bit on that, not too much, and darken it down a tiny bit as well. So pick up a bit of water, pick up a bit of water if it's too much. I just put on a sponge just to take off any excess moisture. Right, doorway in right hand building. Bigger version of window really. Bit of dark paint, not a complete rectangle. Um, can't really see at this stage there's a little bit of light a bit of glare against it but it will when it's dry um, you'll be able to see that a little bit darker and on the left hand side i'll use a bit of white paint to go around some of these some of the outsides of the um, windows and doorways which is a thing I would use sparingly, but more on that in a minute. Just on the right hand side, it can be anything, a few marks, just so it's not too, uh, too empty, just need to place a few marks in there. And this figure, it does need a right leg, that looks a little bit better I think. Connected down to the shadow. And also with these horizontal marks, I can sort of go down slightly on the left hand side, then fairly horizontal in the middle and then up on the right, just to create the impression of a little bit of a dip in that pathway, in the, uh, in the gradient of it. So, Something dark in between the two buildings. There's an, another connecting tip, which is in the photograph, but some wires going across from building to building, some telephone wires or, or something just to connect the two together. Now it doesn't need to be a continuous line. It can be a, a lost and found line. So some we, we see it, then we don't, then we see it again, then we don't. So it's not a continuous line, but uh, a very thin line, not too thick on the horizontal, a bit thicker on the vertical with the supporting post. Right, going in quite dark now. This is where I'm using neat neutral tint <laughs> only neutral tint 
uh, to get those really dark darks underneath that timber decking. And that up against the light of the boats really makes, hopefully makes those boats pop out a bit more. Having that darkness there. Down in the bottom right hand corner of my palette, I've got some white um, gouache paint that's long since dried, but it's quite good to get a sort of chalky, light gray mixture, which is ideal for painting, say, white window frames that are in the shade. So they've got that darkness already. Uh, there is this sort of plaque of this fish, which I don't want to be too bright. So I think this, this gray is ideal. Now I could have painted around this um, with the dark shadow, but I think it's just as effective with a little bit of this white gouache. That's not, it's, it's been contaminated with so many other different colors. It's not pure white, but just, I think it's just the, uh, the right intensity for the window frames and that little uh, wall mounted fish. They will dry just a little bit darker, those white lines. No. The windows on the left hand side, they need to be a little bit brighter. So I think I was a bit too dark on that, on the white paint on my palette. So I'll pick up something from the tube. So straight from a tube of white paint, it's going to give me a, a brighter, a brighter white. First of all, though, some little straps on that flue. Just like a little hoop. So this is where now I'm getting some paint straight out the tube and just a little bit over the edges of the window, the window frame. Not, again, it's like a lost and found. We're not, not completely covering those windows, but just a little bit. And that distant building as well up into the shadows, uh, pick up on these figures, tiny bit of highlighting heads and shoulders. If I'd accidentally painted over those, just reintroduce a little bit of light into those. And then some little specks of white down in amongst the foreground. This nearby boat, it's too bright. I need to dull it down a bit. So gla I'm glazing now. I'm going over with a, a thin mixture of similar colored paint just to add another layer on top. So we're, we're just 
going going darker by another level, perhaps. Picking up this rigger brush again, just a few little thin lines for that highlighted roof and some timber planks on the side of that middle house. Perhaps make some of these lines a bit darker. Could be some little imperfections in the wood, not too perfect a line, but the main, the main thing is getting the uh, per perspective right. few more little timber lines over there and then we'll have a quick little review. So this is the finished painting, I believe it's Port Clyde, Maine, USA, and a lovely scene concentrating on this demo in this tutorial on the importance of lights and darks, making the darks really dark to make the lights even lighter. Um, might sound a bit odd, but it's true. And as as hopefully I'm I'm showing here on that on that middle boat, you know, catching the light from the right hand side, but above and to the right of it, some really darks, rip some really dark darks there. Composition wise, I've got hopefully a good balance with those two figures on the left hand side. Um, not too close to us, not too far away. Uh, I think that's about right there, that sort of distance away. But a good balance of objects on the left hand side, these houses, the boat, we can see there's a sort of lane going away from us. And then we've got the row of boats here sort of leading our eye um, into the composition but the key thing here um, in this in this little painting demo are these dark darks so really emphasizing uh, these, these darks which I did with neutral tint and um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna predominantly and a bit of alloys and crimson uh, so starting with quite dark at the top of those buildings, but then going a little bit lighter in the middle, darker still down the bottom, and darker, even darker still, underneath the uh, timber decking and, and sort of uh, either side of those boats, just, just to emphasize that color. And then the, the contrast. And then um, coming down to the foreground, Maybe these boulders are a little bit too big. You might think, well, how on earth did those boats get over that, that get over those boulders? <laughs> they might have been damaged, but I think that works quite well. These boulders, sort of another line leading us into the composition to the base of those figures. But the chance to introduce some nice um, definitions, some nice jagged lines, which we did which I did with the medium sized mop brush with a good edge and not too perfect. I'm um, just going around uh, a random, a random line there. So hope you like it. Catch up with you next time.